DIY or Die, Walker Vapor Group LLC, or any of its associates do not condone nor encourage the use of nicotine, vapor products, or any mood-altering substances without the explicit consent of a physician. The content viewable on this channel is strictly for entertainment purposes only and not meant to be seen as informational or educational. Must be 21 years or older to view these materials. To another episode of the Mixin' Vixens. How are y'all doing today? My name is Emily, also known as Mill Nikon. Let's say hello to the other Vixens. We've got Jen, the e Juice Fairy. How's everybody doing tonight? Hello, hello. We've got hello. the Mixtress Rin. Hello. Hello. And we've got the lovely Lumi. But she's muted. So muted. Hello. Hello, Lumi. How are you? I'm peachy. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. See, so the yeah, Zoom isn't even like switching over to her for me. It's not just me. Did you, can you guys hear her okay? That's weird. Anyway, super happy to be back. How's everyone doing? Doing good. Uh, How's you know, everyone's weekend? Every, everything's great this weekend. I just noticed my first blooms uh, driving down the road yesterday on um, my way home, and I was like, oh, my God, spring is coming. Because here in North Carolina, our weather is crazy. We go through winter, pretend winter. We go back and forth and back and forth, and then we have this thing that they say, here comes fall. Then we get another, like, winter spell, and then now it'll – once you start seeing flowers, that that's gonna pop, and it just pops like overnight. All of a sudden, everything blooms at once, and I die of allergies. So I went and got all my allergy stuff yesterday, and I'm cleaning the hell out of my mouth. Hopefully, it won't be as bad. I remember last year it was yeah, you had it pretty bad, didn't you? Yeah, it 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 doesn't last long. It lasts like three weeks, but I mean, I get the I have to go get a shot every year. I'm trying to beat it every year. I say. I'm going to catch it before I get it. And I'm going to start taking my steroids and I'm going to start taking my allergy medicine. I'm going to beat this thing. And every year mm. <laughs> I end up having to make that appointment to go get the shot. And then the shot makes it better within a week or so. Yeah. Good. What did, uh, what did everyone do this weekend? Anything, anybody do anything fun? No, not really. I taught my niece how to drive this weekend. Well, I started to, I put you her behind did. the wheel. Yeah. Was that she's 18 and she's never what? driven before. So I put her in my car, went to the mall, parked, and uh, got out, showed her where the gas pedal was and the brake pedal, and then just put her in the car and just didn't let her hit the gas. You know, when you let go of the brake, it just rolls. Mm -hmm. but it rolled, My car rolls at about eight miles an hour with, with, with just letting go of the brake. Cause you know, I put the digital thing so I could see how many miles an hour she was going. And then I just was teaching her how to brake. And before the, we did it for like an hour and a half. By the end of it, I was having her do UEs and three point turns <laughs> and doing about 35 miles an hour down the mall you know, in the straight away and then tell her stop and make her stop us without jerking me. It was it's nice. kind of fun. I was messing with her. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Ren? What'd you do this weekend? Um, I tried to make crab rangoon. I'm not entirely sure it came out very well. It was very salty. I don't know if it was like residual from because I made fries in it not that long ago and I put salt like directly in there. So I don't know if it's like residual from that. I'm hoping that's what it is. Otherwise, like my whole batch is screwed. But um that was really about it as far as anything exciting, I guess. I love crab rangoon. Yeah. So yummy. It'd be I'm really nice to be easy. able to make it at home because you you can make a lot and then like freeze it. Yeah. And then you'll have it forever and it's not that expensive because like I got imitation crab, which is cheap. 
um, then cream cheese. The little egg roll egg roll wraps are like the hardest thing to find, um, but you get a ton of them. So I don't know. I'd like to be able to kind of hone in on it being good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Oh, and I made uh, mozzarella sticks again, or I tried to. Tried to? What happened? I don't know. Like, they're okay. Like, the first attempt was not good. Um, The seasoning was off because it told me to use Italian seasoning. And it ended up tasting to me like Italian sausage because I used the wrong um, cheese. You're supposed to use whole milk uh, mozzarella. And I accidentally grabbed the part skim, which is what I used. Yeah. Yeah, it's what I usually eat, but the problem with that is it's pretty much just rubber. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't <laughs> melt very well. <laughs> no, not at all. So I don't know. These are better, but they're still not like good. So I might, because I use panko crumbs, because that's what the recipe called for. So I think if I do them again, I'll just try regular bread crumbs, because maybe I just don't like the ones with panko. I don't, I don't know. Maybe. I don't feel hmm. like they should be that difficult to make. <laughs> yeah. You should be pretty basic, but you'll get it figured out. Trial Hopefully. and error. You know, every time you do it, it gets better. Uh, imitation crab is just like a bunch of different seafood put together. Like I read the ingredients and it's like just all kinds of fish. It's just it's cheaper than buying real crab. And I figured mm-hmm. since I wasn't sure if it would come out well, which I'm glad I didn't, I probably yeah. shouldn't go that route, at least to start. Because a lot of times when you get crab rangoon, um, it doesn't have real crab in it anyway. Like if you get it from like a Chinese place. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they wouldn't be able to sell it as cheaply as they do if they were using real crab. For sure, for sure. Yeah, and I'm going to try to do pierogies next, and I'm scared about that. Oh, I like pierogies. I've, you know, I didn't, I never had pierogies until I came here. I don't, it's not a Canadian thing. It's just that I've never had them. But, um, and like, so my wife's like stepmother made them and they were like, eh, they're okay. Like, I didn't really care for them. I, they weren't that great. But then I ate them when her mom made them. And like, she did, she makes them with like bacon and she caramelizes onions and like, you know, really just like the works with them. And oh, they're so good. You gotta cook them in like the bacon fat that you, know, you <laughs> put the bacon in, right? <laughs> yeah, it really depends on like how they're made. Cause like if you get like a Mrs. T's type pierogi, which you know they're fine, but they're like they're not great. They're kind of hard and just freezer burnt and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you get like the ones that are like homemade, like we have a place locally that makes them. I think they're called Sophie's. And they're really good. They're the closest to like a homemade pierogi that I've had that you can get at the store. So I don't know. Again, it's not a very complicated recipe. So I'm hoping that they cur- turn out okay. Um, Cause ideally like I have the air fryer. So I want to make a bunch of things homemade and just freeze them. So that when I wait, when I want them, I can just warm them up. Yeah. Buying all the prepackaged crap. Sounds a lot better for you and a lot cheaper than you know, buying the prepared stuff. Yeah. And I mean, I am Polish, so making my own pierogies, I feel like I should be able to. to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, for sure. Lumi, what did you do this weekend? Anything fun? Um, it's been kind of a rough week for me. I'm going in and out of dizzy spells and weirdness, so I've just been kind of taking it easy. Oh, no. Had problems with our well at the start of it. It's, it's fun. fun week. Fun week. Life is a roller coaster. Sometimes you got ups, sometimes you got down, sometimes you go round and round. <laughs> That's for sure. So did, did everyone like uh, mixing up this week's profile? Yeah, I went. I, I, I did because it's been a while since I've played with this exact profile I made use for it. Yeah, yeah. I um, I just went with the fruits, a mix of kind of fruits that you know made me think of the of the picture with the different colors and stuff. And I don't really just do fruits, but I was pretty pretty happy with how how it turned out. It was fun. Cool. Yeah, 
Um, I picked this one. So I wanted to do something really fruity. And when I look at that picture, that's all I see. I see like, I see it like, looks fruity, fruit. right? Yeah. yeah. And I figured it would give like a lot of freedom for people to mix different things. Like you can go like fruity pebbles with it. You can go fruit with it. You can do like a funfetti cake with it, like a frosting. So, I mean, you can mm-hmm. do a whole bunch yeah. of stuff. Yeah, you, you, this was a good pick, Rin. Thank you. Because I, I literally played with different colorful stuff all week. Uh, I decided on the one I turned in because it is the first one I made and it was really good like on day three and the other ones were just experimental so you brought out the creative side of me trying to make it just gave me a lot of colors to play with you know yeah it's kind of think about a fun pity frosting I would I'm gonna have to mix that now just for fun (laughs) <laughs> I used my last week's um, mix to kind of inspire this week because I thought what I was going for last week, I had something really cool to start an ambrosia salad. So that's yeah. where I went with mine. Awesome. I've never had ambrosia salad. you know that? Really? It's pretty good. I don't care for it, but you know, I, I don't like anything, so... Yeah. <laughs> I like everything. I'm not, you know, when people, um, when, when people say, all you have to do is cut back on, on eating junk food. I'm like, I'm not a big girl because I eat a lot of junk. I'm a big girl because I like to eat everything. (laughs) (laughs) I eat anything. At least once. I'll tell you what I haven't eaten. I have not eaten that stuff they call tripe. That's it. Oh God. Yeah. I like eat it. I look at it, and I'm like, I just can't do that. Yeah, I don't. I the other day, um, a friend of mine asked me. He's like, we were talking about that. He just got a new apartment. He's like, oh yeah, how have you over for dinner? He's like, will you would you eat tripe? I'm like, yeah, sure. I'll try anything twice. Like my motto is, I'll try anything twice because the first time, you never know. It could have been like a bad circumstance. It's not cooked right or, or whatever it is, you know. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll try anything twice. And then I looked up what it what tripe was. It's like bull intestines or something. I'm like, um, maybe not. It's a stomach, yeah. I think. The stomach, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll probably still try it because I mean, I like to be. I'm a pretty adventurous person. I like to to broaden my horizons and try different things. So. I don't know. I don't think I will. I mean, I've thought about it for several years and just haven't never been able to. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'm like, I wonder. No, not that. No, my curiosity is really not that. It's not that serious. We don't have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm more adventurous with seafood. I mean, obviously, I don't eat meat anymore. Have you ever right. had um, alligator? Yeah. It's good, right? Yeah, it's not bad. I only had it once it was fried, and I feel like if you fry anything... It can well, be true. Good. When I had it, it was fried. And I'm like, this just tastes like fish. Yeah. It, it to me, fish. from what I recall, it had like the texture of chicken. Yes. Or um, shrimp. But it reminded me of chicken. Yeah. It like, felt like chicken, but tasted like fish. It was, it was good. I had alligator nuggets one time, and it was weird. <laughs> it was like eating chicken that tasted like fish. Yeah. I mean, a frog it, is so weird. weird. I was like, wait. <laughs> Yeah, frog's not bad either. It's really- I do not like frog. I <laughs> uh, don't know. I don't think I've ever tried frog. I mean, they I say it tastes like chicken was. too, but but I just, there was, it was just not, and I've tried it twice because, and there's two things I've eaten that I won't eat again. Frog is one of them and so is rabbit. I can't eat either one of those ever again. Yeah. I've never tried rabbit. I don't think frog's bad. It's just like a very tender chicken. I guess it depends on how it's prepared. It was fried too. It was just deep fried with breading and all that good stuff. So, I mean, everybody else liked it. I just, I'm, you know, I'll tell you, us being mixers is no coincidence that we pick up notes in every damn thing. So I can yeah. pick up the oceany, uh, the, I can, I could taste the dirt on the frog. And I was like, no. 
we're not, <laughs> I can't eat this again. And then with the, with the rabbit, it was just, I think it was more psychological that I was eating a rabbit. It hurt my feelings. So I can't do that again. <laughs> I, <hurt your feelings. laughs> I just couldn't. I was, I was hurt after I ate that rabbit. I was, I was in a bad mood. I was <laughs> sensitive. I was like, I eat a rabbit. Oh, I'm not even dying. There's plenty of food in my fridge. Why did I eat a rabbit? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would probably eat it again if I was starving and there was nothing else. Yeah. There's, there's no need for that when there's good chicken in the fridge. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so let's go. Let's get started on these mixes, girls. Who would like to go first? I can go first. Um, I have to pull it up real quick. So, essentially, what I wanted is just something very fruity. I wanted like a fruity candy, almost taffy kind of thing. Um, so, I used 27 bears from Capella. Because looking at the, I want like colors, like I saw, you know, yellow and red and purple um, with like the white base to it and pink. So that's kind of like where I went is just like looking at colors and kind of translating them into like something fruity. So the 27 bears is like my pineapple. And I also wanted like the gummy note from it. Um, and then I used that at 1%. And then I used 27 fish from Capella at 0.75% which is their like a Swedish fish. And I figured that would give it more of like just a slight darkness without being too dark. Um, Cause all the other flavors are very bright and light. Um, then I used Flavora citrus soda, very low. I originally did it at 0.5, but the lime was coming in a little bit too hard. I wanted it very subtle in the background. So I knocked it down to 0.25 um, and it also has at least to me, like an effervescence to it. It's one of the very few sodas mm -hmm. that has like a, that almost carbonation-esque feel to it. Um, and I wanted to add that to, you know, the mix. Um, then I did 0.75% fl uh, flavor art marshmallow just to give it a little bit of more body. Um, and then it has like the slightest light vanilla. Um, I originally used one-on-one -on -one vanilla marshmallow uh, which worked. It's just, it was a little bit too vanilla heavy for me. I wanted it to be more neutral. And then point or um, strawberry taffy at, from Capella at 2.5. That's kind of like the base flavor of it. Um, that also has like a taffy, like it's, it's very textural um, or the closest thing that I found to textural as far as like a taffy kind of base to it. Um, and the strawberry note, at least to me, and mind you, I've been kind of muted to strawberries for a little bit now. Um, it's not too strong and it wouldn't like overpower everything else. So that's what I did. I love that Capella strawberry taffy and I don't see people using it enough. Yeah. It's such a good flavor. It's like, it's like it's, the body of their marshmallow, but the flavor of their sweet strawberry. But it doesn't seem to me anyway to fade as fast as regular like Capella sweet strawberry. Yeah. I think it's something about the texture for me, the reason I don't use it, but it is a very good flavor. And I probably haven't played with it in a long time and should probably when I don't have allergies. Yeah. Like now, good. before I get allergies. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> Mix this up. It's really good. 27 bears and 27 fish both are excellent flavors. That little bit of citrus soda just to kind of give it some pop. This looks yeah. awesome. Is it did it come out it so it came out like a candy? Yeah, it's just it's kind of like when you vape it it, it hits at different moments. So right now cuz I had to remix it from like the original batch, batch to lower the citrus soda, which mind you, at least for me, it does get a little bit more subdued as it sits. That lime fades a little bit. Um, so you might not even need to really bump it down too much, but um, I wanted the other flavors to shine through, uh, but mainly still on the front end, I am getting a lot of citrus. I think it's a combination of the 27 bears, which is the pineapple mm -hmm. and the citrus soda. Um, the 27 fish, I also had to lower just slightly because it was punching through a little bit too much. Um, 
it just kind of adds, like I said, like a darker note without being too dark. Because I guess the Swedish fish are supposed to have like a black currant, like main note or something. Or some people get cranberry, I don't know. But it has like that weird flavor to it that I wanted to add in there. Um, and then the marshmallow is kind of at the back end with like the toffee or the taffy, just kind of a more of a after lingering. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight this one because I like vaping candies when I am going through my winter to summer transition in the fall when my sinuses are messed up. And this and then I don't have to create one because I can just vape this. <laughs> you just described something that I would be able to taste during those times. Yeah, it's exactly completely nice. off yeah. in the field compared to the stuff I normally make. So I mix the candy. One of my recipes this week was also a candy and it had some of these same ingredients in it but mine fell flat so yours looks a lot fuller bodied and I mm. think I should mix this and can mine <laughs> yeah it's pretty nice and I, I don't even know that I've tried 27 fish before it's just something I forget about because it's such a weird name is yeah. when I'm looking at like flavors I'll search ELR stash by like the name and it kind of doesn't work sometimes because like this, it's very obscure. Like I'm not going to find 27 by searching candy or whatever. Yeah. I was just like looking through things and I'm like, oh, I have that flavor. Let's yeah, and it's good. It I bet it, it gives your mix a nice kind of chewy red flavor, basically, you know? Yeah, yeah. that's what I like about 27 fish, that chewy red flavor. Mm -hmm. It smells really nice too, which is just a bonus. Yeah. Very cool. All right, well, I'll, uh, I'll go next. Mine's a little similar in the fact that we both used um, a citrus note. I, I actually went with a, a one, two, three, or a three, two, one, if you will. Um, and it's kind of like a gummy candy. I did a 3% F.A. King. I just got it in, and I happened to have been, like, testing it and wanted to eat to use it because it's really good it's like um I'm not sure what fruit it is but it's red and sticky and really good is it pomegranate guys it's supposed to be black currant black currant that's what it is and then i did two percent fa blueberry juicy ripe again it's a newer flavor to me um so i was playing with it and it tasted really good so i'm like let's throw it in there and then I wanted something citrusy to kind of make these flavors pop. And, you know, blueberry and kind of lemon go really good together. And, you know, the black currant is very deep. I wanted something kind of bright and to pull everything up a little bit. So I went with 1% Vape Train Fizzy Sherbet, which kind of falls along the whole candy theme because it's a sweeter, you know, like it's kind of like a lemon lime pixie stick sort of thing. Uh and it turns out really good. Like it's it's very flavorful and poppy, and it's you know because of the you've got the fizzy sherbet and you've got the deep of the black currant and the blueberry. Like it's very like well rounded. I'm I've been enjoying it quite a lot. Yeah, when I saw your recipe, I was like kind of mad because it's like I was trying to think of like a citrus thing to put in there, and that would have been perfect. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> no, citrus soda is a great choice too. And and I, I think with both of these recipes, either one would work, you know? Yeah, I really I really like that king flavor. Yeah, it's good, right? Yes. It, and it's like thick, like the texture is real gummy, like it's like syrupy sweet. And I really like it. It's good. Yeah, I've been mixing it equal parts with uh, the new Mullenberry jelly candy. Oh, yeah. How's that jelly, really? jelly candy? Yeah, um, it more just adds more of the jelly note because it's supposed the king is supposed to be like a black je uh, black currant jelly candy or gummy or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and the jelly candy just adds a little bit more of like the sugary coating because that's what I mainly get from the Mullenberry one is just like a sugar coating. So it just adds like a little bit more to it. You just kind of have to watch because I can see it muting um, if you use it too high, but I do like it. Um, I just, ha I, I've been waving that for like, 
probably a couple months now and I'm starting to get that thing where I can't taste it anymore so I have to switch to something else so and now yeah. you got a new candy right and I have been vaping it this is actually something I would continue vaping so that's nice I want to try it with that fizzy sherbet though because I really like that flavor so I might just kind of like swap that out for the citrus soda just to see what it does so I'm I'm certainly glad that I didn't go with the candy because now both of you guys did a candy based on the picture. <laughs> and I guess the, the picture does throw you into the candy <laughs> realm. Mm -hmm. Well, it was that or like it also I think you could go floral with it because it kind of looks it looks springy. It looks like like a wedding bouquet kind of, you know, and um, I didn't want to do floral. So like I'm going to go candy. Yeah, and I thought about floral too. And then I was like, uh, that's Rin's thing. I'll, I'll let Rin do that. And then she comes up with the candy. <laughs> so glad I didn't turn in my candy. <laughs> Florals take time that I did they not do. have. <laughs> they do, yeah. It's, it's more than, you know, just a couple couple versions of something throw together. And, you know, <laughs> florals you have to kind of work out a little bit more. So, looks good, Emily. Thank you. You're welcome. Who wants to go next? I'll, I'll go next. All right. I think I pulled mine up a minute ago. Let's see. I did. So I just went with a traditional cereal, fruity pebble style <laughs> instead of um, fruit loop style. Um, so I did, I called it Rainbow Crunch. And the reason I did that is because I saw all those colors and I really did make several candies. And then I just, while I had all those flavors out, all of a sudden the, the um, breakfast cereal, and I'm sorry, the Fruity Circles popped out at me. It's been a long time since I've mixed a Fruit Loop type cereal and it's been a long time since I've actually baked one. So I figured I'd make one with some of the new flavors we have. Well, um, I decided to do the fruit circles at 7%. Now, Attitude from Mullenberry is a combination of fruits. It's got like blue raspberry, strawberry. It's got, it says it's got caramel, but I find more of a cream note than a caramel in it. And I find it to be raspberry heavy versus the strawberry or the blueberry in it. So it blends really well with the fruity circles. It makes it like the pinks pop out on it, in it. Um, and then I, it, but it needed a little more grain. So I added breakfast cereal from FA and, and that was just because that was the closest cereal I had near me that I find has good texture to it. Plus it gives it a darker, uh, heavier feel because I find the fruit circles from Capella is not very grainy at all. It has the flavor, but it's not grainy enough for me. Mm -hmm. Um, so I used that at 0.75 and I really debated on dropping it to 0.5. But 0.75, after a while, it does fade out and you're just left with the grain in it. And I did think about using um, the Capella, which is the cereal from Capella. Is it 27 cereal? Is it the one that's just plain? It's cereal 27. Breakfast cereals? Cereal 27. Or, yeah, cereal 27. I thought about using that instead of breakfast cereal from FA, but then I'm not familiar enough with the percentages on that and I would have had to mess with it more and just get it you know, get it to steep out a little bit. And, you know, cereal vapes need some steep. And I made this last week so that I'd have plenty of time to steep and these flavors I was familiar with. I put 2% meringue because I find all cereals are usually pretty freaking sweet. And meringue just mm -hmm. mixes with that breakfast cereal in a way that it takes the darker um, Cheerio type cereal notes that it has in it. And it, it fluffs it up and sweetens it up into like a sugary cereal, especially mm -hmm. at 2% with the meringue. Plus it adds a little bit of that cream note. And then I use 1.5% of vanilla custard too. Um, and I only use a light amount because I wanted to be more of a crunchy cereal than a soggy mess, if that makes any sense. So it was just to add something to round out the edges to bring it all together and give it a little bit of a cream note like eating the cereal with, with the fruits already in the milk, 
if that makes any sense. So I kept it pretty simple. I didn't add any sweetener to it because with 2% meringue, I think I have enough sweetener, guys. Um, and it was pretty good. It, I enjoyed it. I made a 30 mil. I'm vaping it. It's good to me. It's not, it's been a while, but I think I burnt myself out on cereal back when cereal was the big craze where I, I was, that was my ADV for like six months, but it was good going back to that. It was fun. So thank you for the picture, Rin, because it let me do that. Yeah, I need to try that new custard. I have it and I haven't used it yet. It's great standalone. It smells really good. It's like the custard version of Capella um, um, Vanilla Swirl, as far as it being in, in the at, on par where people would just love it. Nice. So that's it. It's just st it's standard, straight to the point cereal. Enjoy. Any <laughs> cereal lovers out there, make it. It's not good. verified. It's <laughs> not verified. It's just very straight to the point. This is it. It works. 7% um, of Capella Fruit Circles makes excellent cereal. You just need some mm -hmm. just, enhancing notes. Yeah, I like how you just kind of, that's a star. You just kind of built around it and, and boosted it. I added it. a little more raspberry, a little more fruit with that attitude. And honestly, it was pretty good with just the attitude and the fruit circles, but it did need some cream. So that's where the uh oh creamy milky undertones and the vanilla custard came in. Yeah, I don't have that attitude. I need to I need to get it. Is that just like a mixed fruit? Yeah. It's a it's a mixed fruit with uh it they say caramel, but I find it's just mixed fruit with some cream. If it's a caramel, it's very milky caramel. Cool. Awesome. Very nice. It doesn't have any of those burnt notes that I find in most caramels. Yeah, it's good. And you know, a little bit of, a little bit of caramel, I don't think if it's soft, you know, it doesn't go out of place in a lot of things, you know? Yeah, it's, it's a very soft caramel. Cool. I find it more cream than caramel. Very cool. Feels and real bad. To add meringue to cereals. Like, it's just the perfect cereal milk. I mean, it is. I, I thought, and you know, I almost... I almost went all out and did the, um, you know, Flavor West um, hazelnut goes well with cereal, but in lieu of favor, you know, doing a whole verified recipe, that's where the breakfast cereal from FA came in because that has some of those nutty notes from mm -hmm. Flavor West hazelnut. You know what I mean? It does bring in some of those nutty notes. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Man, and every now and then I just get a craving. I still get a craving for vaping a cereal. Yeah. And that's what happened to me with this picture. I mean, I made a bunch of candies and I was like, oh, let me, oh, hold on. Let me play with this a minute. Oh yeah. I remember this. You know, it's so, it's so nostalgic kind of sort of when you vape something that you vaped a lot of back in the day. Yeah. Those cereal recipes were like everywhere for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Everybody trying to make that looper is what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And then I tried it. I'm like, really? This is what it's people are going crazy. <laughs> Why were you trying to make this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's what it, that's when you get spoiled as a mixer. Like you try the things yeah. everyone raves about and you're like, okay, that's just red vines and maybe something else. <laughs> yeah. What was it? Animal or something like that? Yeah, I used, I used to buy commercial juice still like for, you know, inspiration or whatever. And it would just kind of pissed me off and it would give me inspiration in the, in, the, in the fact that like I'm like oh I could do better and so I would mix it just to make a better version of it <laughs> yeah and I used to go to the vape shop regularly to taste the juices so I used to go in there and just chit chat with the guys and just taste the juices buy an addy and then walk out with inspiration mm -hmm. um, but then you know when they had all these crap where you can no longer taste and most of the vape shops here in North Carolina they didn't they started out with that quarter thing where if you pay a quarter to taste you know you had a membership blah 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 but then they just did away with it all together and now you just can't even taste the juice before you buy it so yeah. then that ruined it for me and I'm not I'm not buying juice unless I want to support a specific company and I'm buying it to support them and to give it away to somebody mm -hmm. 
Okay, Lumi, you're next, my dear. Feels really bad because my recipe has eight flavors. Where Winston <laughs> had six, like it just something feels off here that I used more. <clears throat> it's okay. But, um, yeah, I got. I decided to kind of go with what I thought I might have been onto last week, and I still feel like it's something that can be built on, like. The mind palace is just going insane but i wanted to give out the first draft of it because it still came out really good um i did ambrosia salad so i used cherry by vso at 1.87 golden pineapple capella 3.42 marshmallow vanilla one on one 1.52 powdered sugar one on one 0.63 raw pineapple 0.33 sweet tangerine by capella 1.8 oh no i didn't do an odd number for that one now 1.8 is still odd it's not two <laughs> vanilla ice cream by liquid burn 3.64 vanilla pudding by flavor 3.52 killer what's that v vso cherry like um, it's not medicinal. It smells medicinal, but it honestly, I think if you use it, I haven't tried using it too terribly high, but when you use it low, it feels like a cherry that you just like freshly got out of the refrigerator and just sliced, pulled the pit out of and ate it. It's not too, um, jammy. So I like that it doesn't get to that stage. I think it might if you use it a little bit higher, but at the lowers, it feels like um just feels like a fresh cherry nice and then i used powdered sugar and marshmallow to kind of get that marshmallow base pineapple tangerine and cherry for the vso and then i really like to cream things you really yeah. like to cream things i really like to cream i like it that you like that yeah, that vanilla ice cream and vanilla pudding combo is so good. I never, I don't think I've ever tried the Innerware raw pineapple. I've never tried the Innerware raw pineapple either. Fresh and I went on a buying spree because it's on the 50% off, I believe, at um, River Supply Co. And we're just putting all the Clarence flavors in our shopping cart and it was there so. <laughs> and he was on a pineapple kick so he was really hunting down pineapple so I had it I figured I should use it sure. I hate buying clearance items because what if they don't sell them anymore and then I'm and what if I like it and then I'm stuck without it and then I'm in my feelings are hurt so I hate yeah. doing that and I've got so many flavors where like the they've either been reformulated or discontinued and it's like, I still have almost full bottles of them, but it's like, what's the point in using them? You know, like I still have old inware milk chocolate that I keep thinking, oh, I'll go come, I'll go back to some old chocolate recipes that use it and mix it up. And I never did. <laughs> I never do. I have the old inware milk chocolate as well. And it's like, you know, I don't want to make any new recipes with it because no one else can get it, you know? So it's like, it just doesn't get used. So I need to go through and like, call all my flavors and just you know get rid of a bunch of give it to somebody pit that pit that stuff forward some yeah. of the clearance hurt, stuff hurt that was, some of the clearance stuff that was on river supply co i don't think it's disappearing like they have wonder flavors crepe on there uh cream filling i love wonder flavors cream filling that's on there for 50 percent off oh that's a it, good one that's a new one too isn't it yeah yeah that's a good flavor like, I, just some of them, I just think maybe they're not going to sell them anymore, but the ones that I got, I didn't think, I wasn't too worried about them going away. Or they could just be getting rid of stock that they have sitting around. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's how I ended up with um, Euro Flavors Grapefruit, and I love that stuff. So now my feelings are hurt because I can't. I don't know, but no, I guess I can get them directly from Euro flavors, but 
<laughs> just the one flavor. <laughs> yeah. I got it. I got like a four ounce for like $3 or something like that when we were, when it was nicotine river and they were getting rid of the line. So I got plenty because I only use that like at 1%. Mm -hmm. So we had a couple people play along with us this week. Um, the first one is a Brian McNatus. Sorry if I butchered your name there, Brian. Uh, but on ELR, he goes by Rum Pirate 613. He did a watercolor bouquet tea for Mix and Vixens. <clears throat> and that was excuse me, 1% uh, Flavor West Blueberry, 0.75% Vape Train Boysenberry, 2% F.A. Green Tea, 3% Capella Hibiscus, 1% Capella Juicy Orange, 0.25% TFA uh, DX Juicy Peach, 2% Flavor Lemon Tea, 1% uh, Loran's Lemonade, and 0.5% Capella Super Sweet. This is a really interesting take on this. A fruit juice slash semi-floral bouquet infused into a sweetened hibiscus tea. I mean, that, that looks interesting. It looks very springy, mm -hmm. and it's very much in line with that picture. Very much, yeah, it looks interesting for sure. Got all the colors and the springy feel out of it. I chose to ignore some of the colors in the image, so props <laughs> on you for going for all the colors. I mean, you could be colorblind, it's all good. Yeah, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good one. Yeah. You have to be colorblind. And then the uh, the next one, uh, Kate Hines, also known as Dixie Rue on ELR. She did an elderflower and strawberry gin. Interesting. So that is 1.25% Flavora Citrus Soda, 0.75% Flavora Elderflower, 0.75% Flavora Juniper Gin, 1.5% Shisha Strawberry by Inuera, and 1.25% F.A. Strawberry Juicy. A fizzy, fresh, spring, summer feeling gin-based cocktail with fresh strawberries, elderflower, and a touch of lemon. She says the gin is present, but not too in your face. I use citrus soda as the effervescent base while the citrus brightens the mix. The combination of Inuera and F.A. strawberries are fresh, sweet, slightly tart, and work nicely in this mix. You know, elderflower is one of those flavors that, I mean, it's definitely not like a beginner floral by any stretch of the imagination, but it to me is like one of those, it's very pleasant, but I just can never know what to do with it. You know, like I can never know how to to mix it because it's either like really strong and overpowering it can be um but i really like it it tastes really nice i've never tried that one i've never tried that one so i can't really comment at all but i mean it looks it again a very spring mix right mm -hmm. i think they did a good job with this as well i love it uh, let's see. Good job, Dixie Roo. Thank you so much for participating. I yeah, hope I hope somebody else makes I hope somebody mixes it so that we can get some feedback for you. Guys, somebody mix her mix. Yeah. <laughs> Not very much on florals. So seeing florals anywhere just scares the ever living crap out of me. And I really like the mix of like the strawberries with that little bit of citrus soda. Yeah. <laughs> I, like the, I like the idea of it, but I think I need to mix elderflower before I can make an educated decision or even a comment at all. I just haven't mixed it. What percent should I mix it at if, for standalone tester? Like 
0.25, 0.5%, I would say standalone. Okay. Yeah. Ren, I see you talking about soft bake, uh, the soft bake cookie by Mullenberry. I went to, I did a Bull City order a couple days ago and they didn't have it. I'm like, oh no. They yeah. had cookie bite, but they didn't have the soft baked. They just recently got like the last batch of their stuff in. So I'm guessing. This batch know. might be in the next order. I have heard that they have another order of Mullenberries coming in. They've got an order on order. And yeah. I think it's been shipped. So it takes a while to get it in from Poland. I think they're expecting it sometime at the end of this week, beginning of next. Cool. Yeah, and I then, really like that soft bake cookie. And then I that flavor so Lumi like so much should be in that order too. What's no, that? we're not talking about it anymore. <laughs> That's all Lumi's. <laughs> She's taking the whole stock. I don't even buy it anymore. <laughs> Everywhere I searched for an hour last night on so many sites, and I could only find it in 15 mLs, and I was just like, Four ounces yeah, hasn't even lasted me two months. It's, you know, it wouldn't be worth your time. Yeah, four ounces didn't even last the full two months, and I'm getting low, so I'm going into that panic stage. Uh, it'll be here next week sometime. End of this week, beginning sometime next Big week. Big 16-ounce bottle, just for you, Louie. Shh. I'm going to need a GoFundMe for her Bayless addiction. <laughs> there, Rin said it. I was trying to be nice to me and not say it. <laughs> Rin put it out there. It's Bayless, guys. That's Lumi's flavor. Try it. <laughs> no, I'll pay for the Bayless. I don't need a GoFundMe. I just need an ample supply of it because it's an addiction. Yeah, but it's expensive, especially if you're trying to get them by, like, the gallon. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Rin says. Buy a gallon direct. Just have one of those like water packs or something. <laughs> Just streamline that right in. Wait, Addie Tooney put some green faces on Bayless. Does that mean Addie doesn't like it? I don't like it either. I don't. What's I, the profile? I freaking love it. It's supposed to be like a cream wafer thing. I don't know. Let me see. That's right. A wafer cookie. Right. I like the wool waffle. Oh, <laughs> I ended up not getting that. You didn't. I had ordered before you responded when I asked you about it. Yeah. You waited. The wo -wo waffle. Uh, Can anybody get the galaxy, galaxy cheesecake from them? The blueberry was a little bit floral, so I wasn't the biggest fan. Okay, just asking, just because I haven't mixed that one. I noticed a lot of Mullenberry's fruits sometimes get a floral note to me. How about the come on Cinnabon? How was that? I haven't tried it. I'm not big into bakeries, so I kind of avoid them. Yeah, I'm not big in bakeries either, which is why the ones I'm mentioning right now are the ones I haven't tasted. Um, Bayless is a creamy and smooth chocolate drink with hazelnut notes, according to their site. See, for some reason, I get like a really light sugar cookie note from it, like a sugar wafer with chocolate hazelnut creamy spread on it. And I, I love it. That's what I get from the waffle, the woo -woo waffle. <laughs> For me, the oh, WW waffle's missing something. I don't, I just, I like the Bayless more. Yeah, the, the woo, woo waffle, the only thing that I would critique is it needs to be creamier. Like, I would add a cream to it to make it complete. It's not a one-shot for me. It also goes well with coffee. But I do like that flavor. Yeah, I like Nutella. Nutella. Mm -hmm. All right, now we need to stop talking about it before I sell it out again. <laughs> okay, we will. We'll stop talking about it. So, uh, does anybody have anything else? Or are we going to... Let's just wrap it up and get on out of here. There you go. We got to thank our sponsors. Yeah, why doesn't someone else do that this time? I forget who they are. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Rin's wearing the shirt, the Bull City shirt right there. She's actually sporting our sponsor, Bull City. And we have all the flavors. And um, Emily, what's the one in Canada? Flavors to go. .ca. Flavors to go from Canada. And 
who else do we have? Did you say Flavora? I did not say Flavora. Flavora is another one of our sponsors. And we, uh, who has one shots out there? We do. We do. <laughs> and they're where? They're, uh, what's it, what are they calling themselves now? Yeah, that's why I said that. Because uh, Flavor Jungle. Flavor Jungle. There you go. Oh, See, man. I have a bad case of, of CRS, can't remember shit, which is yeah. why I don't do this ending part, but I certainly can ask the questions and make you guys answer it for me. And it's the same as thanking them, right? Just a, just a quick little internet search. Uh, I just popped a link out there in case any of you want to, you know, throw us some tacos our way. And I have a flavor pack at Bull City. Um, yeah, so do I. There you go. Is Rin, wait, Rin, do you have a flavor pack at Bull City? Nope, I just have my one little flavor at Flavor Jungle. Yeah, so <laughs> buy Rin's the most. Yeah. <laughs> and we also do have merch. We have um, shirts. Emily yeah. has a lovely shirt. Um, I have yeah. shirts. Lumi has shirts. Fairy doesn't have them yet. That's okay. Aww. You have to wait. I'm not, I'm not a brand because I am unique. I'm not shareable. Whatever. <laughs> you know you would have a shirt if you, you wanted one. <laughs> fairy. And like 10 flavors around it. Yeah, that's we'll it. To, we'll have to talk to him about getting a, a mix and vixen line. Of shirts. Would, it, would anybody buy a Mix and Vixen shirt? I mean, I now, would, but keep in mind that like you know, all the proceeds like we don't get money from this from the swag. Like all the proceeds go to Casa. But would you would you buy a Mix and Vixen shirt? I would buy the crap out of Mix and Vixen shirt. But I would I'm, buy a Mix and Vixen shirt. But would you guys, the viewers, buy a Mix and Vixen shirt? I it's love our logo. Like our logo is awesome. What does yeah. our logo look like? It's a little M with a V and then like a little drop. Oh, aha. I remember it's the intro every time we start the show. See, the thing is, that I think our viewers, we have a lot of males. We had more females. They could wear the Mix and Vixen shirt. Yeah. Maybe you could say we support the Mix and Vixens. Yeah, Mix and Vixen dudes or something. You I know? mean, like... I do think swag has made tube tops. <laughs> so we could all just get Mix and Vixen's tube tops or bikini. tube tops. And, <laughs> and where's my fat would roll at the top, yeah, the I'm bottom. Not. I'd be I'd look like a <laughs> I'd look like a sausage with all the shit. Like a biscuit. <laughs> Open up the can of biscuit, the top and the bottom and everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not wearing no tube oh, tops. Shit. <laughs> I need to watch that on the replay. What just fell down on? That was God <laughs> saying <flavor>. no. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm with you. Yeah, I'm not getting this body into a freaking tube top. No. <laughs> so Louie will be the only person wearing that because I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I get blue to wear one. I ain't doing it. <laughs> oh, jeez. And uh, they're wanting to know what next week is. We're just doing a ch another uh, to chit chat episode. Do you guys want us to do a game? Did you like the game thing that we did last time? Yeah, let us know uh, what you guys you know want to see. If you like, we're not going to have power again next week. What do you What's mean? That? She don't want to come on. She don't want to hang out with us. That's what that means. She's already sick of us. I know, right? Just can't keep them. I'm <laughs> so hard to find talent. Emily, Rin, and I must be really bad company. Nobody likes to stay with us. They don't love us. I know, right? I'm toxic. <laughs> well. Wow. Well, Cherokee Vapor said, well, we guys could buy for our better halves. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Like uh, Vixen supporters or like, you know, the Vixen bro. We'll, we'll think of a cool thing so that guys can, um, we'll think of something. We'll discuss it in the back room and come up with something funky. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching and thank you, Wayne, for having us on your network. We're out of here. Bye.